Microsoft stock has just surged, and it's proof that their artificial intelligence advancements are changing the game. We now live in a world where Bing raises more excitement than Google, and Iron Man's Jarvis is now a real thing. On this episode of AI Focus, we'll dive into the three ways Microsoft plans to dethrone Google, and later in the video, we'll get into Microsoft's real-life Jarvis, so if you want to see that, make sure you stick around. So like I mentioned, there are three ways Microsoft plans to defeat Google. One, by stealing its search revenue. Two, providing infrastructure and tools for businesses to build their own AI chatbots. And three, incorporating AI into its products. Let's start with number one, search revenue. Everything started with Microsoft's $10 billion investment into OpenAI and the integration of ChatGPT into Search. The latter move was a direct challenge to Google's monopoly on the search industry and a major blow to the company that would start the AI war off with a bang. Satya Nadella, who runs the show at Microsoft, said, We look forward to continue this journey in what is a generational shift in the largest software category, Search. I'll bet looking forward to it is a gross understatement. But just what does Bing bring? See what I did there? Bing will likely change the way people search the internet as a whole. When you do a Google search for information, you're more searching for websites and hoping that they contain your information. You have to click each link, scroll until you find the info, then combine and summarize all the info you've gathered from your search. And that's so last year. With Bing, you search for something and it just tells you the answer in a conversational way, complete with citations. There's no need for the archaic searching of the olden days when you have this method at your disposal. This way, you save time and your results are more accurate, or at least over time it'll become more accurate. Samsung is even considering replacing Google with Bing as the search engine on its smartphones. What if Apple does the same? This has caused a panic within Google leading the company to rush and build as many AI capabilities as it can within its existing search engine. Microsoft has had a 10% revenue growth in search thanks to Bing and its Edge browser, the nemesis of Google Chrome. Since the application of AI, installs of the Bing mobile app have grown four times and Bing now has more than 100 million active users. Googling is still a verb, but soon we might be binging our answers to questions. Luckily for Google search, search revenue still managed to grow 2%. Bing has never been a major earner for Microsoft before, unlike Google, whose search component accounts for half of its revenue. But Bing isn't the only trick up Microsoft's sleeve. This brings us to number two, building infrastructure. What about those businesses who want to build AI chatbots, but don't have the ability to buy huge amounts of computing power needed to train and store these models? What about those businesses that want to build their own AI integrated interface but aren't as financially stacked as Microsoft, Google, or Amazon? That's where Microsoft can add value in what writer Preston Grappa calls AI as a service. With this idea, Microsoft would sell AI capabilities just like it sells cloud services with its Azure platform. It would provide the processing power, framework, and other infrastructure a company would need via an AI version of Microsoft's Azure Cloud Services. The tools and services needed to build apps would be added in, and voila, Microsoft would charge based on the AI services used by a business. It's called the Azure AI Platform, and it's already running. Companies like H&R Block, the NBA, and CarMax already use the service for a variety of tasks. Microsoft has 10 times more Azure OpenAI service customers than last quarter, with the number equaling up to 2,500 customers. The cloud alone has lifted Microsoft from out of near obscurity 13 years ago to the second most valuable company in the world. The company now hopes the AI cloud can make it number one. By the way, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay updated on all the latest AI news and updates, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. Now we have number three, Microsoft Copilot. Microsoft 365 Copilot integrates AI into Microsoft's most popular tools, including Microsoft Apps. Copilot, according to Microsoft, will be able to draft a two-page proposal based on what's found in a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet. In Excel, the AI will be able to analyze your data and create a chart to visualize it. 
PowerPoint will be able to create a five slide presentation based on a Word document and find and include relevant stock photos. If what Microsoft said is true, then in the app Teams, the AI will really shine. It's supposed to be able to listen into meetings and create a pros and cons list about a topic being discussed. It will also be able to make follow-up suggestions after a decision is made, and that's pretty cool. Teams was introduced in 2017 and had already racked up nearly $7 billion in revenue by 2020. Microsoft 365 is the company's cash cow. No matter how relevant the company is, everyone has always used it. Microsoft 365 is currently battling Google Workplace for domination in productivity apps, with Microsoft having the slight edge. If they deliver on what they promise, the edge will be more than slight, to say the least. Microsoft's quarterly net income is up 9% at $18.3 billion and posted sales of $52.9 billion, far exceeding expectations. It's safe to say the company has a nice head start. Google just last year was primed to win the AI race and it had the best technology to do so. But Google sat on the tech for fear of it threatening their bread and butter, which is search revenue. That now obviously turned out to be very foolish because now their search business model is very much threatened. In response to Microsoft, Google released its barred large language model to largely negative reviews. But Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, says that the AI behind BARD will be put into its future search products. Analysts are saying that Google's AI tech is strong, but they've just tried to implement it into products too late. Google has the brightest minds in AI, but they're engineering minds, not Steve Jobs type minds. But like LeBron down in the finals 3-1, there's still hope for Google, and that hope is its investment in AI over the years. Google isn't new to this AI space at all. JP Morgan has come to Google's defense, saying that Google is well positioned due to its investments to accelerate efforts around commercializing the tech behind its AI chatbots, known as large language models or LLMs. Pichai was quoted saying, I've compared it to the successful transition from desktop to mobile computing over a decade ago. Our investments and breakthroughs in AI over the last decade have positioned us well. But now as promised, let's get into Microsoft's real life Jarvis. And just like Tony Stark's visual assistant, this Jarvis will impress. ChatGPT is great and all, but text-based chat is just one of many AI functions. The ideal AI would be multimodal and would be capable of interpreting audio, video, and images as well. And this is where Jarvis comes in. Jarvis is a system that uses ChatGPT as a controller where it can employ a variety of other models to respond to your prompt. In a paper published by Cornell University, Microsoft researchers lay it all out. A user makes a request. The bot then plans the task, decides which model it needs, has those models perform the task, and then generates and issues a response. Check out this example illustrated in the chart. The user asks the bot to create an image where a girl is reading a book, positioned in the same way the boy is in the sample image. The bot then plans the task, uses a model to imitate the boy's pose, then uses another model to draw the output. Users can even add multiple tasks in a single prompt. Check out this example where Jarvis was asked to generate an image about an alien invasion and then write a poem about it. For this task, Jarvis used ChatGPT to write the poem and Stable Diffusion 1.5 to generate the image. Jarvis can even access the internet. You can insert a URL and ask questions about it. The best way to use Jarvis right now is by using Hugging GPT, a web-based chatbot that Microsoft researchers have set up at Hugging Face, an online AI community that hosts thousands of open source models. Hugging Face is like the Walmart where Jarvis goes to pick up the models it needs to complete tasks. There are somewhere around 20 models on Hugging Face, so if you want to get multimodal features right now, give it a try. You may look at this and scoff at the comparison to Marvel's Jarvis, but you have to look at this like the first telephones. When you wanted to place a call, first you would have to talk to an operator, and they would use a complicated process to direct signals to the receiver of your call. Today not only is calling as instantaneous as the recipient allows, but we can text and FaceTime too. In addition to that, look how fast AI is improving. We could really have the real Jarvis by the end of the year. What do you think about Microsoft's future? What about Google? Who will win the AI war? Let me know in the comments below. 
subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen, and thanks for visiting AI Focus.